Hello again, everybody. This is Clean Cam, or just Cam, whichever one you prefer. Coming to you again with another video. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about a little bit of style. This is going to be more of an interest type of video, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I'm sure it does. But it's not necessarily, it's going to have a little bit of wisdom and knowledge and basically speaking to the mind a little bit and then more so just another way of y'all to get to know the creativity of where I'm coming from. Sometimes how I might put things together, this and that, if you'd like to know. This can translate to many different aspects, whether it be professionally in the business world or simply socially. So without further ado, today we're going to get into this. So as you can see right now, I have on a brown or tan suit, the blue shirt, blue pocket square, red bow tie, and I'm actually rocking some navy, some navy suspenders. I don't wear them that much, so the word slips my mind every now and then. But I actually go along with, of course, you know, the color coordinate goes along with the blue pocket square that I have here. On top of that, have my red socks to match my bow tie and, of course, my dark brown dress shoes. So without further ado, I'm going to get into my first thought. I was told to probably, this was about a few years ago, I want to say, I was told to bring, and also rocking, as you can see, dark brown watch. I was told to bring this video to the or this information to the attention of several individuals or well by several individuals to anybody who might be interested. This is a question and a topic that I have gone across many top notch CEOs or men who wear them very occasionally, especially if they have to wear them often to like business meetings conferences, things of that nature. And quite frankly, these are all these same colors that I'm about to bring to you to now will are colors that are highly brought to you based on whenever you're trying to look for a suit, whether that be online or in the store. Some people may consider these colors conservative. However, you can make them pop, which is what I try to do with them. So my first one that I would suggest to you, others may suggest otherwise, but my first one would be simply a navy suit. Probably about the same color as my suspenders. Maybe a little lighter, a little lighter, maybe the same color. Navy, or of course, as you want to say, blue, silver, or medium gray, black, and brown or tan. After those four are done and in the closet, go have fun, it's on you. But those are the first four. If you're trying to get, if I had to get, on a, on a, if I had to accumulate at least four within four different years, those are the four I'm gonna start out with right off rip. Anything, I, anybody have anything to say about that? But you already know where I'm going with this. You all already know I have my side camera over here, getting a little side view of me. And of course I have my coat hanger over here. Last time I had my jacket on there, but this time I thought I'd wear it. Uh, however, basically my reasons for these four, if I, if you were to ask what well, order would I purchase these in? For one, the brown, which is the one that I have on right now, will be the last one. That is because technically that's gonna be your casual one. That's the most casual, but just like casual Fridays or at the end of the week, a uh, professional work week, that's when you would normally wear a casual suit, correct? Well, so that'd be the last one I would get. However, Navy, in my opinion, is some, it's an argument, sometimes it's a debate. It's been answered by many, but still debated by others between the black suit and the Navy suit. Here is my take on it, is simply that 
a navy suit, when you talk about a navy suit, you're talking about the simple color of blue. Blue happens to be basically, I wear blue like I wear gray. Sometimes I will have on about three or four different shades of blue in one suit, honestly. We're talking going from the suit or the jacket to the slacks, to the dress shirt, to the tie. And with that being said, it's that it's a very, it's a comfortable color that says it's be around me, but at the same time, I still mean business. And it's not something that says, it says also at the same time, relaxed, fun, but at the same time, serious business in a sense. So whereas black, in my opinion, Black is not, it's a great color too. It says serious and it says business. However, sometimes it may be, it also says power, which in some settings may repel some individuals. But that's just my take on that. So the first one I would get is a navy one. Of course, you could wear this one first option, whether that be a conference, board meeting, or an interview. Of course, you know, job interview tips. That would be the one I would select. Right after that one, you can choose between either the silver one, which is my favorite one, the silver one and the black one, whichever or it's a matter depends on the type of situations you plan to encounter. Or if you're looking at two, it depends on if you're looking at those particular colors, it depends on what situation you're about to get into. So if you're doing this for interview purposes and it's a really big deal, I will probably go with black first. However, if it's not that of a sensitive topic, then go with the silver if that's what you really want. So, and then of course, whichever one you choose second, make the other third and then end it off with the brown one. So those are the four suits that I feel like we mentioned on. Tailoring. You can get them tailored. Of course, I'm one that always tailors my suits, no question about it. I love a good fitting suit. It just, Makes me feel better, honestly, and it just looks better. That's probably the only reasons I really do it. Uh, it just doesn't look sloppy. You know, I used to face flack about it, but not anymore because honestly, it's just my style. It's just what I do. So, however, I do recommend getting it at a decent fit, especially nowadays with the older generation. It may not be much of a problem because honestly, I think it might look maybe a little odd for the older generation to do it, but not really. I mean, they can too. I've seen it. So, but I would recommend that. And you don't have to, like I said, if you don't, that's even better because that means you're being an individual. So make your own choices, but that's what I do. So without further ado, the next thing we're gonna jump into it's going to be the importance of footwear. Footwear. I was once listening to a few podcasts when it came to style, and one of them claimed that how important footwear is. And honestly, through my personal experiences, I can concur strongly. It is a major power statement whether you're talking professionally or personally, it really is. Sometimes some businesses or some situations where you might find yourself simply will look down at that because honestly, your footwear, it says a lot. It really does. I wouldn't necessarily put too much emphasis on the socks, but I know just like the dress shoes, um, it just, it does a lot. My favorite color of them, I you may find me wearing a lot of light browns. However, my favorite color would be the dark brown. I feel like it makes a very bold statement and it really expresses the serious side of my personality. However, if you're going into an interview, I will recommend definitely black. It also depends on the color of suit you're wearing. It needs to correspond with that, but it's very important. Because sometimes, even personally, that's the first thing some people might pay attention to. And honestly, that may be where they center about 70% of their attention to. So keep that in mind as well. 
Some may say, oh, well, I don't care. Well, it'll show. Not just in your footwear, but your personality and the rest of your style. And that's fine, too. However, if you want to get into that ballpark and meet those standards and be seen as is that, footwear is where you should start, honestly. Maybe the second spot, but it is very important. So keep that in mind. This next topic is something that <laughs> I have. I actually had to get this one started even in the places that I interact the most or that I frequent the most, honestly. And it might even surprise you because actually I used to be into this one a lot. But I had a lot of people telling me, oh, you stand out too much, this and that, this and that. I'm like, well, that's the point of the assignment, right? It's the shine. And if I'm the only one shining, that's fine. It just is what it is. Do not be afraid to sport a bow tie. <laughs> Don't be. You'd be surprised how often I come across that. The bow tie hits a lot harder than a lot of people might even realize. It just does. It makes a huge power statement. It really does. Now, I'm not saying where this too many business affairs or interviews or things such. I've actually been told that you should not wear that to an interview. And I agree. But you're talking about just the type of elegance it's going to bring off, especially, I mean, you turn heads. And some might say, oh, I don't want to turn nobody's heads. When you turn heads, you create power for yourself. Remember that. Attention is key. Attention is power. Power is key. Put those three together. Most likely you're going to end up with one of these. I, it's a great, it speaks power. It, I actually meant to demonstrate on the tying of it, but maybe I'll do that in another video. But anyways, it is something that's, it's one thing to honestly master the art of the by the way, there is considered at least 19 different knots on a regular long necktie. My favorite one is the double Windsor, but there is one thing to have the wisdom of how to know how to do that. However, it's another thing to be very skilled when it comes to tying a bow tie because of the formality it also represents. Bow ties are normally something that you wear to formal events. And that says a lot more about your etiquette. And that's also another thing, what I mean when I say don't be afraid to sport a bow tie because that shows someone, that's basically not only is it showing somebody, some, someone something about you, it's also gonna help you grow your mind just a little bit because now you're sporting something that you don't see often sported. I know some people, that's all they wear is a bow tie. I find it interesting. That's not really my thing to wear it all the time, but I sport them. Like I said, don't be afraid to sport them because sometimes that might be what gets you what you never thought you could get. However you want to take that. that. I know it has several meanings with it, but I'm not going to be explicit with any of them. So I leave that out for you to determine what you want to use it for. And it doesn't just, just have to be used for formal events. It could be used for the smallest of things, the smallest of occasions, in my opinion. So... I've worn them to places where people thought I shouldn't wear them. And I said, well, why don't you have one on? Welcome to the world of camp. So this next topic is one that I also really like. The power of the burgundy suit. I don't know if it's really gone out of style lately or not. I have not seen them much. Lately, you all might have. I have not personally seen them much, but a burgundy suit is a, I would say that's probably right behind the black suit, if not tied. Though that suit right there, whether it's has a pattern to it or not, if you're going to any type of personal event, whether that be a date or something like that, I don't know if I recommend that be the one that you wear on the first one, but that is definitely one that's going to make a powerful statement. 
It has a lot of personality tied up all into that burgundy suit. It is one that I would definitely recommend. Heck, if you want to get that one for your fifth suit, I would say go right ahead. Go for it. Honestly, because they can be seen in professional ways and personal ways. I know some stores that only sell professional attire that have had them in there. So it's it's a power. It's I think I may have one or two. Hold on for one second. I think I have maybe one or two of them, and they are something that I highly recommend. So, burgundy suit, remember that. Put that on your list if you haven't already. Another thing we're going to talk about is simply the color coordination, the tie, pocket square, and the socks. Socks is a big one. But anyway, with the coordination of all three of those, we're talking about simply the color coordination. And of course, there is, I have my list over here to my right of topics as I display them all to y'all. Just want to let you know what that is that I keep looking at. But anyway, you have the color coordination of tie, pocket square, and socks. As you can see, tie, pocket square, and socks. Pocket square, not everybody. I've even had people tell me that they're not really too big on the pocket square. I see the pocket square as basically a symbol of the class. It's not something that you have to wear, but it'd be cool if it, it wouldn't hurt to put one on. So especially for certain type of events. But anyway, whenever you are putting these together, you can make them all one color or complement of one another. Usually some people go based off the color of the shirt. Like I know uh, some people there's a rule to where if you're wearing a white shirt, you must wear a white, a white pocket square. I normally do that depending on whichever tie or suit I'm wearing. But white pocket square is usually my favorite to wear. I just, whatever color suit you have on, to pop in that white pocket square is always a put just finesse to me, in my opinion. But like I said, it just depends on what's, what color dress shirt I'm wearing, which also goes for your future information to where normally when you are wearing a white dress shirt, it is customary to wear a white pocket square. You don't have to. You can wear one that is complementary to your tie or the same color as your tie. However, make sure that you should always match your ties to your socks somehow because that's basically, that's the rule of thumb. If you go look at any picture, most likely, if if this if it's not an all black, you know, black socks, black shoes type of affair, normally I'm, I'm sure on most models you will see that the tie is in some particular coordination with the socks. It's just a good look on the eye. It's a good look to her, and it's a good look professionally in a sense. And also make sure that pocket square is following. Of course, I know, uh, I don't know if y'all seen, I do wear like the tie bar too. I don't have a particular rule for that. I just put it on. Yeah, uh, normally I have one, I have a blue one, uh, blue and gold actually. Normally I try to make them silver. Therefore it pretty much goes along with just about anything on the suit that way it's not throwing anything off but with that being said make sure that your color coordinations we should ties pocket squares and socks are all on one accord and if you're just wearing you can even put a um a labeling pin at the top if you're doing that just make sure it's all fine and dandy another thing is whenever you're wearing watches most people try to go look for the biggest watch, most flashiest, silver, iciest watch, whatever. Sometimes it does actually not look good with a suit. What looks good is one such as this with a strap or a dress watch, which is actually a little bit smaller than this one. It brings a bit more flavor and class to your suit, which is honestly 
the point of wearing it in the first place. I'm not saying that it's not a good idea to wear it with a suit at all. It can be if that's what you want to wear, but I'm saying what will probably make it look more elegant is by wearing a dress watch in a sense. And if you want more information on what that looks like, I can provide that somehow for you. Or you can look it up on Google in a sense. Uh, if you want to take that as a joke, you can, but I'm actually serious because when I learned this information, I was stunned and said, really? That's not something that's recommended, but it's honestly not because the goal whenever you put on a suit is to go for elegance, not necessarily that whatever look that brings to it. So with all that being said, honestly, I hope you all picked up a lot of information off this video, whether it be for job interview tips, uh, things just want to wear. Uh, and also another thing I want to get into more than just, you know, suits. Uh, when it comes to the winter time, turtlenecks, pullovers, half zip sweaters, those are all things that are will go perfect as well. Wearing the dress shirt or the button up shirts. On top of that, if you're going on a date or whatever it might be and you feel like wearing suit with a turtleneck that's one of my favorite looks it's pretty it's it's elegant classy and simple all in the same time and it's comfortable and there you go i i have not really necessarily worn it that much i don't wear it as much as i would like to if that makes sense but i do recommend you wear it though it's a pretty nice look. At the same time, if you also want to go for a more casual look as far as with the suits and polos, I wear that a lot too. And that could actually be a good look when you're out with a certain mate or what have you. So anything to basically bring style and relaxation combined or casualness as you will, so. This is not gonna specifically be something for just men's attire, as it is not just specifically a men's channel. If females feel the need to, if they wanna learn from this too, I don't pay too much attention to females attire, but uh, when it comes to basically like a business meeting or a interview, I would suggest, I don't know too much about a, a dress. I maybe like a suit and a, a, a button up or a dress shirt. I think that a suit and a blouse may not be the best idea. That's just my opinion, but something like that and probably preferably a pantsuit instead of a skirt suit as you want to cover up as much as possible i believe i'm not for certain if y'all have think if y'all know differently then do that but i didn't just want to speak to one audience on this video or on my channel as a whole so with that being said um I do believe that it's flat footed shoes that are also more preferred and re recommended rather than heels. But that being told, uh, I don't know too much about how the jewelry and accessories plays out. I think one around the neck is fine. Uh, not too many on the, the arms. I could be wrong, but that's something that would be logical in a sense to me and that being said i think that is pretty much all i have for you today so if anybody if you have questions or comments you want to like subscribe or share this video with somebody else like comment subscribe go right ahead I was really excited to do this 
video I've been waiting for a long time, and I finally got it done. So. Y'all might see that's a little weird. I'm just excited. So once again, this is the attire. Can't promote any brands. Not to that level yet. But until next time, signing out. Clean Cam, thank you very much again for your time. Goodbye. <laughs>